Hi there, it's uh, Josh here, uh, your Attic Insulator. Now, today we'll be discussing the difference between fiberglass insulation blown in and closed cell foam. Now, of course, the obvious is that closed cell foam, for a lot of you know, is the best product. And I will explain why. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I have going on to four years experience doing attic insulation. And so as a lot of the viewers know, I do all kinds of different attics, high, low, uh, super big, tiny. And so I've got a whole bunch of different content to share with you, including some tips with bathroom fans, attic hatches, and other aspects uh, in the attic that I talk about. And I also do some time lapses. So definitely check those out if you are interested. So with regards to fiberglass, uh, fiberglass on the microscope looks like this. And then closed cell foam on the microscope looks like this. You can see that fiberglass lets air through. It looks like all kinds of little needles that are put one on top of each other. It slows airflow, but it doesn't stop it. So that's one of the good things. And at the same time, it's also one of the bad things because it slows down air. And if there's cracks or if there's little holes that are in the vapor barrier that is just in behind the drywall, then moisture can get through and then go into the insulation, especially in the walls. It's mostly in the walls that um, is a little bit worrisome because especially if there's no air gap after that fiberglass insulation, then you don't have airflow that's able to eliminate that uh, vapor that can pass through. And so what can happen then is you can have uh, moisture buildup in the bat and that's definitely never a good thing. With regards to attics, there is a lot of air space above it so the moisture will make its way all the way through the fiberglass insulation again if there is a break in the vapor barrier um, and so that's why you always want to look at your uh, top plates on your walls and so where your electrical goes through where your plumbing goes through any lights light fixtures any sort of thing you want to seal with either i can use silicone sealer or you can use that non-expansion foam seal. But you have to make sure that there is no gaps after you're finished. The best way to do that is you enter your attic, you look, and if you can't see any light through from the attic side, then you know that you've sealed pretty much everything uh, as much as your eye can see. Fiberglass is designed to resist conductivity and because it's made of glass, glass itself does not transmit heat very well so that's why that's used as a base material for sheets of insulation the product has an additive that allows each of the layers of fibers to stick together whereas with blown insulation you don't have that additive because then you put it in the machine and the machine can cut it up if you had if you tried to put bats in the machine and cut it up you would definitely break the machine so i definitely advise against that with the spray foam. The spray foam is two chemicals that are combined together to make polyurethane foam. It forms bubbles because inside is a gas because the two compounds react with each other. It creates these bubbles, these tiny, tiny bubbles that uh, create a molecular structure that is also pretty solid. That's one of the reasons there's no ambient air within those bubbles. The air or vapor literally is hitting a wall and can't get through any further. So the only way for heat to get through something like this is through conductivity. So over time, if that surface area is really, really hot, and then it sort of transfers its heat really, really slowly, but it has to pass through that gas. And because the gas that's trapped within those bubbles is lighter than ambient air so there's less particles within this bubble and so it's much harder it's kind of like if you're playing pool uh, the very very first time you break is super easy to hit those balls right but then if you are left with just the one ball in the entire pool table that one is a little bit harder to hit because there's only one left so that's kind of the comparison that 
I like to think to understand the difference between sort of ambient air and say a lighter gas. The only way for heat to transfer is for it to hit particles and then they sort of have more energy to transfer to other adjacent particles. So that's why foam is such a great product because it is both a conductive and convective resistant insulator. So there's no air um, that can pass through that has energy that can go through this barrier. Whereas with fiberglass, it goes through these little films slowly, but again, it passes its way through. So with regards to installation benefits and circumstances, uh, loose fill fiberglass is so in itself loose fill. It has no additive, just like the sheets of insulation where all of the fibers are stuck together and they're you know relatively difficult to rip apart. Whereas with loose fill, um, it's all easy to uh, rip apart. Loose fill can be installed in dry but cold or warm situation. Uh, obviously you don't want that to soak any water because then it would get ruined. With regards to polyurethane foam, the surface or substrate that you're going to install it has to be uh, relatively dry and also warm. It can't be really cold uh, because the bonding won't happen with uh, the material that you're trying to spray the foam onto. And it also won't expand properly. It, it just The chemistry just won't happen uh, properly. And what could happen is that the foam could fall off, crack, uh, any sort of wonky things. So if you want to know more about polyurethane foam, there is a great channel called Spray Jones. Definitely check him out. I used a little bit of his clips on uh, my video and uh, got awesome permission from him to do so. So he has all sorts of videos on all kinds of different topics on spray foam and you can definitely ask him questions. He's definitely not shy to answer your questions. So with that, hope you learned something in this video and I will see you next Tuesday. Have a good one.